sorry so we are live now welcome everybody thank you for joining us thank you, thank you for agreeing to be part of this at such a short notice i mean thank you so much for making this happen uh, i like to of course thank uh, jay rangam for giving us this space and give you really kind to us um, the reason why we wanted to have this again is the reason why we are having we started in this is so that social kindness becomes a uh, household thing that we are not hesitant to talk about the kindness good work that we do uh we do believe and honestly i at personal level do believe that everybody wants to is capable and is looking out to do good things most of the times one may not know what kindness is what to do and how to do it so i personally i feel most people have these three these three things is what keeps people from doing good work and doing kindness um the aim of today's panel discussion is to informally in a chit chat manner to see if we can at our personal level see how kindness can be done and uh, how i have planned this is i know i did send out some lead questions to you uh, but i'm not going to ask those questions uh, what i would like to start us with is if we can at a personal level share how we got to a kindness space whether it is in your personal a uh, space you want to discuss or at a professional level wherever whatever makes you feel comfortable uh how do you think what was that trigger that brought you to think of and to think that you're in a kindness space um does that make sense no yeah okay um i would can i just start by how i see you all on the screen yeah so i can see ranu on my right and so i'm going to start with ranu uh, i would like to keep it short and simple and sweet uh, so let me say about 2 minutes if that's okay yeah but yeah. if anybody has anything to say let have the courtesy and the thing to let people speak and then we we'll but i don't want it to become one on one also we can have a discussion around it so let's start yeah uh, so uh, yeah uh, i think uh, i i've been a, uh, when i was a child i was sensitive but i never uh, if if uh, for social work as such uh, going into the you know taking it up as my uh, masters uh, was was a career choice so it was more of okay ultimately you have to work and uh, so i picked up uh, social work and but at the same time uh, while uh, i was pursuing social work i realized that this is the space i really want, i feel i can make some difference and uh, gradually uh, while you look at it as your career choice but you also get enough of exposure and uh, experience which which uh, further you know builds uh, develops that conviction that you really want to be in this space and you feel that confident that you can make difference so that started uh, so and and also uh, the fact that uh, when i when we when i got married to asif and that was um, uh, the beginning of my when you know uh, when you try to marry uh, a person from a different faith and uh, uh, which is which at that time 20 years back things were better in any case uh, but at the same time uh, a lot of issues around gender choices decisions that women make and how one we as uh, uh, because both of us came from the same space uh, how we can make a difference so we dhana happened so while i was working with uh, uh, corporates ngos un organizations uh, we we were going out and obviously empathy develops you you realize what what, what is to be done 
but at home, back at home, we were also working on Dana, which uh, is our now our organization. We started it as a uh, as a girl group. Uh, so I think that's that's what it was. I, that's how it all started, and uh, I'm happy that. Uh, when you get into the kind of uh, this this space, it is so enriching that each day you become wiser and and you try to. Uh, it is such a mutual, actually satisfying experience of having uh, you know uh, bringing some difference to lives, but at the same time you you become so. When I'm going to the field, talking to the children, I come back as a better mother. I I personally feel uh, because I'm able to. Uh, make my children sensitive enough. <clears throat> They're more empathetic, and and you can see, look at it. So, I personally feel it is a very, very mutually gainful uh, relationship. And and uh, yeah, just to sum it. That's great. And I know from a personal experience that Dhanak over the years has done a fantastic job. I am associated with them. We were part of the same journey, and it's. grown into a beautiful organization and hope it continues uh mr jaju uh if you could share your experiences with us yeah sure uh i started my journey in 2000 uh basically uh, i'm a son of a cardiologist my father was a cardiologist great cardiologist passed away last year and um, we decided means my father always used to say that do something good at a age when you can you know continue it for a longer time otherwise once you started at a later age and think about ki mai 60 saal mein shuru karunga to samay nahi reh jata so with all that i started this uh, work in 2000 when i was just 40 and um, at that time there was a huge earthquake aaya tha bhuj ke andar bahut problem hui thi usse humne shuruaat ki and at that time i realized that kuch bhi acha karo तो कारवा बनता चले जाता है लोग सपोर्ट को साथ में आ जाते हैं एंड एग्जैक्टली दैट हैपन एंड दैट इज हाउ वी स्टार्टेड जागृति विद द लॉर्ड ऑफ फ्रेंड्स ऑफ माइंड आई स्टार्टेड इट एंड फॉर्चुनेटली बस उस तब से धीरे धीरे ग्रेजुअली हम लोग आगे चलते चले गए और uh, बहुत अच्छा लगने लगा इट बिकेम अ पैशन जैसे कहते हैं ना बिजनेस करते वक्त भी मन ज्यादा आपका इसी में होता है कि कैसे हम लोग बच्चों की एजुकेशन पे हम लोग वर्क कर रहे हैं and we have right now 17 schools in slums of jaipur and ajmer and 4500 around 4500 children are with us and it's really really wonderful journey all through and uh, uh, future i really wish that uh, uh, jitne bhi bacche slums mein because slums mein takleefein sabse zyada hain aisa mujhe hamesha lagta hai because ek kahin se bhi bechare kuch log uth ke aate hain koi construction site pe aate hain वहाँ पे कुछ काम कर रहे होते हैं और फिर वो वहीं बच जाते हैं और न तो हेल्थ का कुछ हो पाता है उनके लिए न उनका एजुकेशन का कुछ हो पाता है बड़ी बड़ी फैमिली एक झुपड़ी झोंपड़ी में रह रही हैं और बहुत तकलीफ में हैं तो मुझे हमेशा लगा कि उनके लिए वर्क करना चाहिए सो वी आर टेकिंग केयर ऑफ सेवनटीन स्लम्स इन जयपुर एंड दर इज लॉट टू डू कोई एंड नहीं है उसका बट आई एम हैप्पी कि जिस लेवल तक हम लोग कर पा रहे हैं हम बहुत खुश हैं उससे and fortunately we have got a huge volunteer team with us the school children a lot of school children we have got almost 2600 volunteers with us who are working for jagriti right now so it's been a great wonderful journey and uh, fortunately got support from all over the government and everyone and that's what uh, this journey is uh, with this we are also into uh, one more thing that is जागृति अंतिम दर्शनिका इसके अंदर किसी भी घर में कभी भी अनफॉर्चुनेट डेथ हो जाती है तो वी सेंड मशीन कॉल वी कॉल इट जागृति अंतिम दर्शनिका इट्स वेरी पॉपुलर इन जयपुर दैट इज एयर कंडीशन फ्रीजर वी सेंड इट टू दाउस फॉर वन टू थ्री डेज एंड ट्वेंटी फोर इंटू सेवन फ्री सर्विस फॉर कंप्लीट जयपुर एंड दस वॉट वी आर डूइंग एंड वी आर इन टू अदर वर्क ऑल्सो आई एम एसोसिएटेड विद ऑर्गन डोनेशन वर्क एंड other works means overall but i feel that the base of everything is education if children are educated then the next generation is definitely more comfortable if they are given value based education and that's what we try we try to give them value based education not just mm-hmm. simple education so true so that 
education right. is definitely our one thing i guess we all will agree to that education is yeah. the foundation yeah. 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 so manisha yeah. would you like That's to share yeah. yeah thank you so much manisha thank you. can you hear me yes ama thanks for that um i think you know uh, i uh, come from a pure corporate background even in terms of my personal background and uh, uh, frankly my moment of epiphany probably came much later than all the other people on this panel and that was a few years ago when uh, with my son uh, i was discussing something and uh, my help who helps us you know need in just such a comfortable life her son who's the same age was also in the house and both of them went to school in bombay um but the stark difference uh between the two children on account of the quality of education intervention that they were getting uh was really a eureka moment for me uh, i might sound extremely foolish but perhaps i was living in my privileged bubble you know so to speak and i realized that my god the amount of exclusion which happens uh visibly and invisibly in front of us uh, and sometimes we just don't know that it is there Uh, so for me that was really a moment where i realized that i have to find some way uh, wherever i can give back in my sphere of influence and i think that really sort of started my uh, i would say self awakening in a sense i'm still very new to that journey so i think a long way to go uh, but i think a start has been made at personal level for sure so that is uh, you know my two bits yeah true. sometimes it's right there in front of you and we're not able i mean most of the time we ignore it i would say and and it's not ignored that we ignore it knowingly it's just that it is so part of our life that it just seems so normal and i guess as you said every little bit counts and we have to try and see if we can make that normal a bit think of it as not being normal anymore ah uh, bobi over to you Sure. Thanks, Zama. I actually resonate so much with what uh, Manisha was saying just now because I think sometimes it's the smallest things in your in our immediate, you know, environment or something that we hear suddenly that uh, that uh, pops the light bulb for us. My journey into what we are calling, you know, the social kindness space is a little bit gone all over the place before it came to where I am right now, and it began really, I think, with. the fact that i read a lot of fiction and if you read fiction you cannot but help develop a sense of empathy for people who are not like you i i believe that very strongly and i think it began or the journey began at that stage for me but i think the three main steps were one that i had the privilege of beginning my career in the development sector after four years of teaching and four years in in financial services uh i began with a role at uh, child rights and you at, at cry and at that time i learned a lot about just the politics of deprivation you know why some people and how some people get left out and what it what it could be what that experience could be to be in that position and not be able to move oneself out of it despite one's best attempt you know that and, and that that sense of social justice developed for me because of the work that cry did during those years and because of the kind of people i was surrounded by i learned so much from them but subsequently two things happened because in those days i was a bit much younger than i am of course and you know the the, the tendency is to become a bit rara about social justice right and i think i realized in the years after that there are two things that are more, that are really important you know this whole um notion in the apartheid movement right of truth and reconciliation that yes of course the justice is important but at some point there has to be a time when we are able to have two very different people engage as human beings together and that that without that you cannot move forward if we are always going to be antagonistic towards each other there is not there is a point at which you move forward and if you want to do that then there is a way in which truth has to be spoken and i think that began for me to make a great shift from and began to help me to see that justice and kindness are two things na huh? the same thing actually no, and i think sorry sorry no, sorry so sorry no 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 parents and and the as a whole notion that uh, last thing that really mattered to me and really hit it home for me this whole point is what harsh mandar talks about in his book called looking away he talks about empathy and he basically says if we had empathy 
would we be able to sleep knowing that a kilometer away, some child has gone to bed hungry? I think that's really what it comes down to, you know? And that's why I'm saying the journeys are personal, that you think you're in the development sector, that you're doing the work, but actually it's what hits you in your gut, you know, uh, from what you see and what you read and, and what you witness really. No, so true. And I resonate with that. I remember, I mean, again, I did the social work course and everything, but I don't think I really came to it till I was working in Punjab and, you know, Punjab was coming out of conflict and Kashmir was starting. Um, and that's when I think, because it was home to me and my work in Punjab is I was like, why am I sitting in Punjab? Why am I not in Kashmir? You know, this work that I'm doing in Punjab, not that it was not needed, it was of course needed. But till the time it didn't occur to me at that point in time that no, it this is personal and I need to do more than this. And I think that's where my journey started, honestly. This was, I think, two, three years into social work, into work and everything. But I don't think the empathy and what you said really connection didn't happen till I realized that I need to move beyond Punjab and make it more personal to myself. Uh, Ritu, would you like to go? Uh, yeah, sure, sure, Zama. So, uh, you know, it's interesting when I hear everybody and I do resonate a little bit with uh, Manisha and I do resonate a little bit with Huai because, uh, uh, and if I go back to my to our this days, uh, Zama, when we were studying together, I really didn't think in a very structured manner that what I will work or what I would be doing would have uh, a connect with social kindness. I, I really didn't even think about those words. Um, and I moved into human resources uh, with, of course, just one thought that uh, I would want to work to make with people to make things better for people. I think that's what drove me to take up a job in the corporate sector with, uh, you know, uh, human resources. The first 10 years, of course, were um, fairly like any, any normal and any regular HR professional working on different processes within an organization. Uh, and I think for me at a personal and a professional level, uh, Social kindness, which in my uh, parlance or in my di mind's dictionary means empathy, uh, became alive when I started working on inclusion and diversity. And hadn't it been for uh, inclusion and diversity coming into India in 2010, I don't think I would have survived working in uh, the corporate sector or working in human resources for the last 22 years. Uh, the work that we do in inclusion and diversity uh, you know, allows us and pushes us uh, to constantly be in other people's uh, shoes and uh, build that sense of empathy and understand the fine difference between empathy and sympathy. Uh, through various situations at work, uh, when you dealt with single fathers, mothers, new parents, uh, people with disabilities, uh, people from the pride community, uh, and how they are accepted, included, and uh, integrated into uh, workplaces and work teams is when I little by little started understanding. I really would not say I understand this space completely. I think it's a journey and it's a constant, you know, every time you are in a situation, there is that little more of uh, the bulb that lights up saying, oh my God, I didn't realize this. I recently, though I've worked, as I said, I've worked since 2010 in the space of inclusion and diversity. And this is the uh, one, you know, recently for a summer uh, project, I had a young boy from TIS who was working with me and he was visually uh, impaired. Uh, a brilliant boy, and he actually even got a job with the Tata Sons post the project. But while I was working with him, I kept telling him, Ganpati, try to visualize this. And he kept pushing me back saying, I'm sorry, I'm unable to visualize it. Uh, 
you know, that little thing, that very small thing helped me realize that even the language that I use or, you know, uh, has to be in a different space, has to be in a different way. So I, I feel uh, there was no one big moment. Uh, there have been and there will be constantly those moments of truth that keep you alive and that keep me alive to uh, being uh, conscious about this. Um, what I'd just like to lastly say is um, I think corporates today in, in a way, in a sense, have started their journeys in the space of empathy, in the space of inclusion. There's a very, very long way to go because first you need to change your home. First you need to change your mind to be able to change those in workplaces. But somewhere the journey has begun. Uh, and to me, I think I feel more strong when with this uh, when I moved into a job with the Tatas because I think as a corporate, uh, social kindness is what is their foundation. Uh, you know, if I go back to words that our founder said, if I go back to the whole uh, the whole whole Jamshedpur right, is, is nothing but social kindness. So uh, to me, I think this just uh, gives me that great uh, impetus or gives me that, uh, you know, strength to be able to make those changes and hope that, you know, workplaces and homes beyond the workplaces and communities would be more accepting and inclusive. Yeah, so true. So thank you so much, Ritu. Uh, Hello, can you hear me? Pratiba. Hello. Hi, can you hear yes, me? Yes, I can. Pratiba, yeah. let's hear you yeah. now. Yeah, so I think uh, I started off uh, very differently from all of you all. I lost my father at the age of one. And I had a mother who had to bring me up with an iron hand, but she had the kindest of hearts. And I experienced that kindness through my growing years. And I would see that kindness not just towards me, but towards the community. For a mother who was a widow at 33, she had a very sensitive approach, empathetic approach. If there was a flood or as Mr. Jaju said, you know, the Bhuj earthquake, she was always writing out small checks, whatever she could afford. And she would feel very happy about it. So I think I picked it up there and then it kind of got fueled when I was in my student years. One of my very dear friends was visually challenged and I used to read to her every evening. We would come home from college and her parents were working. She would tell me that, you know, since we've sort of chatted and, you know, enjoyed our evening last one hour, can you just read what we went through in the four lectures today? And I realized very soon as uh, uh, you know, one of the speakers has said that when you try to do something for someone else, you come out so enriched because during the exams, I would see my friends sitting up, you know, burning the midnight oil. And I didn't have to do that because I had already read to her as a revision uh, immediately after it was taught. So it kind of was sticky learning in my head. And that made me sort of uh, very, very sensitized to people who were in need not necessarily visually challenged, but just anyone in need. And then, of course, my teaching journey, we uh, have quota systems and uh, I used to head a management program and a lot of students came in on quotas at the undergraduate level and they would come from a Marathi medium school and we would put them in groups, random groups. And I remember in my first month, one of the girls came up to me and I was teaching communication at that time and I had given them a book review project. And she came up to me with this thick book of uh, Shiv Khera's uh, translated version in Marathi, You Can Win. And she said, look, madam, uh, you put me in a group. I'm very uncomfortable. They speak English mile a minute, and I'm not able to do that. So I will present this book in Marathi solo. And I said to her, I said, Samiksha, how can you do that? You're in an undergraduate management program and the language of business is English. So that was actually the true turning point in my life. While I had been sensitized earlier, I used to sit with her. I knew she couldn't help what she was saying. So I used to call her into my office along with a couple of others after teaching us. 
and we would sit for a couple of hours transliterating every subject for her wherever she had a problem and within a year she was stopping the class in various subjects her confidence improved and it gave me such a high you know an adrenaline high that i thought that's going to be my a uh, purpose in life that any life that crosses my path i must impact it so then of course i think the dean discovered that as well and she put me in charge of all the underprivileged students because 25% would come from these backgrounds so i would sit with them and sort of train them in english and then i realized that one of these girls came up to me one day and said you put me in a group with one of the business tycoon's sons and he said she said i went to his house to do the group project and his servant quarter is bigger than the house in which my mother works and again it was this you know this was way before the diversity and inclusion uh mantra became a buzz thing in our country so that again sort of shook me up a little and i said okay i need to sensitize the rich people and that was the journey of project chirag we started getting children to participate in social activities and one of them was a teaching thing which also is still running and the other was project chirag where we took them to rural india and made them understand the challenges faced and i think that journey for me has been so uplifting every student who's been part of this journey with me has experienced the same high our students also benefit you know it's not just being good makes you get on to a high all those students who helped me uh, sort of uh, put this encapsulate this project in the early stages were the ch- preferred choices of uh, companies like google b schools like sp jain they would get in only based on that part of their resume so i've always said that social service and uh, social kindness is really a process of alchemy like you all said there is good inside everyone's heart but if you can try to sort of bring out that gold and shine uh, social service is the way kindness is the space that's my true. turn so true pratibha thank you for sharing that um uh, i think we've gone around the room and uh, i have to say it's definitely been each one's personal journey and so enriching in every manner whether it was manisha's son or me working in punjab or anything else but it's been so personal uh, but what makes me wonder now is that we've gone through this journey and i can easily say all of us have been there 20 last 20 22 years uh, if not more and suddenly now we are at a journey where we are at a place sorry where the journey seems to need to change or may wo- have to change uh definitely i'm referring to this year that hopefully we will see a new year and things will change uh but it's not going to leave us so easily in terms of in our minds and in our hearts i say hearts because it has touched everybody uh i don't think there is anybody who is not being touched whether in the good way or bad way i'm not in a position to comment on that uh, but definitely it has changed us all and uh, i was speaking to mr jaju this morning and i was telling him how uh, for me the fact that so much family time whether it's been good or bad i don't know but it's been a learning to have so much family time a nuclear family where four of us were together morning to evening has been a learning for me how do we go ahead from here i don't know but yes we'll have to move on uh, but i would like to spend a little time on this and see after our 20 25 years of working in the social kindness field and having worked consciously and consciously on it where has this one year taken us where do you think we are at a personal space and i'm opening it to everybody i'm not going to make it you speak you speak uh, let's just make it a little more informal and whoever is willing to talk about your last one year please go ahead so i'll go sama if that's yes, fine first yeah. so um so i'll uh, you know at a personal level of course i think uh, 
by the grace of god i think we were uh, doing well and i really didn't struggle because the work kept me alive um and you know when you work in this space of inclusion you work a lot with people's minds and the behaviors and how they see people right different than who they are we practitioners struggled with a lot of things in in the way that people accepted whether it was working from home whether it was uh, you know uh, being kind to people who are different than who you are being kind to women who came back from maternity being kind to a man whose parents had ailing uh, family being kind to various such situations with your team members uh, to us again this pandemic actually made kindness almost hygiene if i may call it that if you were not kind you would not be able to reach out to people through the screen that we are currently speaking on right that's how we've interacted with people across this whole year it was only kindness because starting from the boy who work who makes tea in your office to your md or your chairman everyone could have gone through covid had could have been hospitalized could have had uh, you know was working from home through a laptop in the same manner and was doing jadu pocha and was doing uh, you know cooking and managing home and work so in a sense it was the equalizer that work it kind of broke a lot of myths that you cannot do this from this place you cannot remotely work uh it actually opens up talent to so many people who are unable to come to jobs uh it makes it easier not all workspaces are accessible to people with disabilities if you have to work remotely it can open up a huge talent pool not all workplaces are open to remote working and working uh from home the last 9 months has almost proved that 60% of jobs can be done from where you are sitting it really does not matter that you need to go to office it opens up again opportunities for so many women uh, who have uh, you know dropped off uh, post maternity post marriage post you know uh, life stages that have hit them so coming from where i am and maybe i am putting my blinkers on because this is my work this is my role but coming from where i am i'm happy in a sense in, in a strange way i'm happy that uh, the leaderships the people who make the decisions have seen that this is possible and then now our struggle to get there would be easier that's all yeah that's so true so true everything has its pluses and minuses when you hear you want it to go yeah uh, no i agree actually with ritu you know uh, but i would want to caveat it a little and just provoke a conversation here i think probably the fortunate among us who are in the uh, structured and formal sector have really benefited from this i have you know, i could work from home and home school my children um and just speaking from my personal space i saw that for example our building decided to overnight and even now has tremendous restrictions on help coming in um, and a lot of affluent people like us have stopped paying out salaries um diwali bonuses let's forget about that this year um we are more concerned about sourcing organic vegetables for ourselves i'm being very candid here and i'm sorry if i'm being offensive perhaps but uh i think while on the one hand yes it's been an equalizer as ritu like he said a lot of us are now working from home but i think it's also included and in, excluded and pushed people on the margins even further and i want to that's why i feel that i think maybe there's a lot that needs to be done in terms of a mindset and cultural change uh which ngos can do which organizations like you know yours panels like ours can do in actually stimulating this conversation absolutely i so would tend to agree so i yes i i i uh, Sorry, I, I also completely. Raju wanted to say something. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Is uh, if I tell you about this one year, on a personal level, it was uh, something uh, wonderful because I had my granddaughters with me. My daughters, uh, both the daughters were here, 
and we had a great time because I never uh, we had that uh, 150 days with them, you know, enjoying one is just six and one is 11. So I had a real, real great time. And uh, then my son got married and uh, my daughter-in-law came in the house and that's another fantastic time I'm having with her. And, but yes, uh, if you ask me professionally or if you ask me outside, it was a very challenging year, very, very challenging year, especially for my 4,500 children to manage them. Actually, her subway unko ghar se leke aate the pehle aur wapis se wo ek saal se ghar mein hai aur kitne challenges wo un kachchi bastiyon mein face kar rahe hain un chuggi jhopdiyon mein face kar rahe hain it's is really puri range nikal gayi range mein kaise unhone apne gharon ke andar wo reh ke apni zindagi jiye hain it was really difficult bahut koshish ki hai ki gharon mein unke khana pahunchaye gharon mein rashan pahunchaye but still wapis se wo bachche kaise school aayenge unko online padhai karaye uh, almost 27, so 2,700 children are studying online. It was very difficult for us, our teachers. We have almost 120 teachers on uh, our role. So it was a very, very difficult year. Plus, we were doing uh, a lot of work with the government hospitals. We were uh, providing uh, for doctors and for paramedical staff, almost 2,000 doctors and paramedical staff and COVID patients. We are providing for almost eight months now coffee, dinner, lunch, everything, we are going to the hospital. So it was a tough and a challenging year, and especially for children, because uh, they are in a, they are really in a problem, because parents who are already working, they have job, they don't have food, they don't roti nahi hai. Kaise wo log jayenge? So unke liye bahut kharaab saal nikla hai. Aur abhi bhi nikal raha hai, bahut takdeef mein hai wo log. Kuch bachche to Yesterday only I came to know that uh, there was a cute little girl. I know her personally and uh, because of such problems, she didn't share with uh, anyone. And she did suicide at the age of uh, 11. So I was really upset about her and uh, such things are happening. And it makes me really sad that it was a lot of work for the kids in takleefon se bahar nikal payenge wo bahut man ko vidna bhi hai takleef bhi hai but god is uh, there and i'm sure things will really come back because the real 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 problem is with this slum children uh, slum children and slum people jo log gharon mein naukri karte the unki naukriyan nikal gayi jo log factories mein kaam karte the factories nahi chal rahi hain jo construction sites pe kaam chalte the karte the wo sites ruki padi thi so a huge problem, they don't have any cash balance. They had 5,000 to earn and live. So the difficulty is a lot, to be very honest. And the challenging year, yes. Shanu, you were saying something before. Shanu, you're on mute. No, I, I completely agree. While we, uh, yes, uh, we realized that most of the organized sector was very agile and we all, and, and it has really made our lives much better. Uh, but uh, I also realized that there were both the sides of uh, uh, what we saw around. One was uh, we saw a lot of people coming out to help. I think this was, this first time uh, in my lifetime I, I i realized across sections of society people were there out there uh, we, we we could see uh, you know, farmers on the highways uh, uh, providing food to uh, migrant workers and all and uh, similarly in in uh, my workspace also because uh, you know, we started working way back in march uh, for the truck drivers who were stranded ac across so we were not getting volunteers so my own our own colleagues actually went, went out and there was this spirit of you know uh, reaching out to people who who wanted we also realized that a lot was required because face time is fine but people were missing physical presence of so emotionally people were draining out um, I, uh, my husband was here, uh, stranded in Delhi. I was there with my uh, parents in their 80s and my children in Pune. And yes, I, I, I had this privilege and I decided to shift back to Delhi. That was the moment when I realized this lady who, who had just started coming in uh, mid of 
<laughs> to our house, and we were the only ones who allowed her to come. But her his husband got stranded in Bengal, and I think those are little things that uh, you know. What pinched me that I was deciding to come back here, and she will have she would have no job, no support around, and. Uh, before I came there, I, I made it sure that her husband is there and uh, he joined her. But at the same time, this has further pushed a lot of people. For example, drop, uh, I, I see all the helps around here in Delhi also. Uh, their children are suffering because they, they uh, uh, online classes are not so uh, much apt also because even if they, they, uh, they are trying to arrange for uh, mobiles and um, uh, you know, tabs, but still it is difficult. So I think uh, there's a lot that as people, I, we, we all are working, but at the same time, these children keep coming to us uh, uh, for help because they don't have anybody to guide to use those gadgets. So I, I personally feel that uh, it, it is depressing, but yes, it is. An, there is an opportunity, but then a large section of society, we really need to take it along. Uh, Pratibha, Hagobi. Yeah, I'll just yeah. quickly step in. I think. Sorry, Pratibha, you want to go? Go ahead. You go ahead. Okay, thank you. The um, I think everybody. I, I agree so much with what everybody has said. Uh, even what uh, Ritu, I'm going to call you Ritu now. Sorry. Uh, what has been uh, talking about uh, started with this entire thing about yes, there is there is a sense that we've been in this together, and yet there is a sense of growing realization as the months passed that that together space was very different for different groups of people, and those two things coexist. Those two feelings coexist. Uh, but you asked where we and how we coped personally, Zama, and I want to share very honestly that I don't know as a family how we got through the first three months. I don't know how we managed to stay together, how we managed not to murder each other, how we managed not to get into raging fights. I mean, if we went through 48 hours without a major meltdown in the house, and mostly the meltdowns were from the above 40s and not from the under 10s, you know, it was a big deal. <laughs> it, and and it was because both my husband and I work in the sector. Both our organizations were heavily into relief work. We had pivoted into the use of technology and whatnot. And there were all kinds of stories coming out about how girls in institutions, you know, institutions where they were being cared for after they had been rescued, what kind of support they needed. Their cases had come to a stop. So our teams were on it all the time. Our children who have disability who come to the school that we run, they didn't have any support at all. Those who had got hearing aids or cochlear implants weren't able to get any therapy. So it was, it just felt like, it just felt like a barrage. And it felt like there's no scope for me to stop, any of us to stop, you know? And it's not an opting out or pausing is not an option. And I think because we put that kind of pressure on ourselves, so we got through that period, but I think at great cost to the family, to one's own family, you know? I think in after that, after about June or July, when we got used to the whole culture of working from home and things like that, that's when I began to put some boundaries in place for myself, allow staff boundaries, to be very honest, because if I'm not putting boundaries for myself, I'm not allowing staff their boundaries either, you know, uh, to be allowing that, and to just get a little kinder within the home because we were so so busy responding outside i didn't realize that there's a 10 year old in the house or a nine year old in the house and a dog in the house and they require your kindness perhaps, and your partner you know that that's another thing but it was not pretty for a while no i think we all went through that at a personal level i know a lot of you personally and i know we all did go through the similar situation and you're so right Avogi. i mean i can just imagine knowing your work and others work how much how taxing it would have been i have to say i was a bit more at ease because we were starting up and fortunately the pressures were not so high but yes at home it was and um yeah and as manisha said and as 
the two said, there have been two sides. One is to see this entire thing that how work can be done together. There is office space and the need to be at a certain place to do certain work is really not that important. Uh, spaces can be rethought. And yet on the other side, uh, the divide has just become so much larger. And if you're willing to see, it was at our doorstep. We didn't have to go very far away to see that divide. So it, uh, I'm not done yet. I know Pratibha has to say, I, have, I still have to hear from Pratibha uh, because her work again, I'm sure must have brought up many challenges. Pratibha, could you please go ahead? Hello. Your mind is frozen. Pratibha, can you hear us? Sorry, I think I lost everyone. Uh, I was just saying, yeah. would you like to share something yes. that went through? Yes. Uh, so actually, at a personal level, I think uh, being a little privileged, I enjoyed the work from home. Uh, when I'm a visiting faculty, I tend to spend a lot of time traveling to different colleges across the city. So that extra time that I got, I really enjoyed. But I don't want to talk about that because at the same time, I saw my hired help going through hell at home in the slums. So, I mean, that was, as most of you all have put it, that there were two sides to that. But I think what really got unleashed during this time was creativity. And at a personal and professional level, I saw that happening. So, for example, we deal with solar solutions in rural India. So we also light up schools uh, for better lighting, for e-learning and all of that. So we had the e-learning module, but we could not get them to get smartphones. And these are really below poverty line children. Uh, many of them are shepherds, you know, they live in the mountains. Uh, they don't have access to the school. And of course, soon came the monsoons. So summer was okay because schools were closed. But come June, there was heavy rains. And this particular part of Palgar where we work, gets rain as heavy as Cherapunji. So one of the things we came out with was converting. So we have a very good on-ground partner and a couple of members of my team sat down and converted that MP4 content into MP3. And we managed to get our vendor to give us a solar lantern that gets an SD card holder. So I have some beautiful images of, you know, shepherd boys sitting on the mountain slopes, listening to education on a portable solar lantern. So that was one very, very uplifting experience, uh, unleashing creativity to sort of find solutions for them. And the other thing was uh, very touching for me because through April in the height, at the height of the lockdown, we were in the midst of a project and this village had no water and we were trying to do solar water lifting. And by 5th of May, when it's the worst time for them, I must say that our team, uh, our vendors team actually, because they go install the grid, uh, managed to get extra permissions uh, from the collector and they executed that project. And through the month of May, that village, which was a really remote village in Bharat, which India has forgotten about, got water. And to me, those little things keep me alive and, you know, make me feel there's hope uh, for the future. If we can just shift our focus from the problems we have to the solutions we can bring about. I think that shift uh, more to do with purpose helps. That's so true, Pratibha. And in fact, that was going to be as we're coming to an end, unfortunately, I mean, Almost 50 minutes have passed. And honestly, I don't feel I've been here 50 minutes. I have to say I was really nervous about this. But I think uh, it's been so good hearing all of you that 50 minutes just seem to have gone away. Uh, but yeah, as you said, you know, this is something which I wanted to come up and end with. That What is it that we think we need to do? We're really at the turn of the year. And I hope, really hope that it's a much better year for all of us uh, for every stream of society, every stream in our society uh, just one word and i think we can one word two words and we can sum it up we'll have 10 minutes more 
Uh, so please feel free again, everybody, to share your thoughts for the coming years and hopefully a COVID free year. From now. I mean, not that overnight something's going to change, but as it changes, let me put it like that. Shall I start? Yeah. Yes. So I think one four-letter word that I'd like to say is will. If you have the will, in spite of the government, in spite of lack of manpower, technology, everything, if you have the will, you can create solutions. So you just have to stop, you know, cribbing, complaining, roll up your sleeves and get out there. Uh, fortunately or unfortunately, we live in a country where you just peep out of the window and there's a cause waiting for you. So, so I think you, you just have to get out there and don't worry about scale of impact. I feel even if you can make an incremental difference in someone's life, that's good enough. So that's my that's little so thing. That's so true. I mean, every little thing matters. And I yeah. think really power we have seen in the last one year, if we have weren't aware of it earlier, I think last yeah. one year, one thing that it has taught us is that with the will we can, I guess, overcome this. We did. I think so far we have managed to stay in it because of the will. Um, Ritu, Rano, anybody? Yeah, I'll go. go ahead. So I think uh, for me, it is uh, empathy. Um, I think going ahead, that's something that I think we definitely need to make it a part of ourselves. And I would agree with Pratibha when she says that, you know, there is there's a solution to everything. There is a, uh, there's an opportunity in what comes to us sometimes. And I've been through very difficult time personally, too. I've always seen the opportunity rather than go down saying that, oh, now what do I do? So I think that. And the third thing, I think, uh, again, I mean, Pratibha talked about it which I agree so much is influence. I may not be able to change the world. I cannot change the world, but can I influence the maid who comes home? Can I do something for her that she is a stronger woman? Simple. And that's how I live my life. And I think that should be what each one of us should be doing. It's very difficult for me to you know, make any changes beyond that. If I'm able to do that much, at least I will sleep a better person. That's all. So, uh, Yes, for please. me, that's uh, love. Actually, uh, for me, it's, it's very, very important that uh, I see happiness all around, especially in my slum areas where children are really suffering. So, uh, like, I can give them the smartphones, each and every child, so that he is continuing with his studies and all the values which we, we can give on those smartphones because it's going to last another maybe three months, four months, five months, I don't know. So uh, I, I really want them really, really happy. Uh, I want people to join me, work and uh, make sure that thousands and thousands of children who are going through hell right now, there's a happiness on their faces. I really want to see them really happy. And... Uh, once uh, I think we need to uh, spread more and more love all around, and I hope, yes, that's very important because if there's a hope in their minds, they will be, you know, uh, happier. So that's for me, uh, 100%, only and only. I want to see these children very happy. Yes. I know. I think you're uh, me, I think, uh, there are three terms that I would like to emphasize on empathy, innovation, collaboration. I, I, I personally feel empathy, innovation, and collaboration because th that's how I feel that, uh, that that is the way forward because until unless we uh, are there to understand what, you, and there has to be a will again. Uh, but at the same time, innovations, and we have seen a handful of you know, people going innovation. That's the way people can survive in today's time. They they need to uh, unlearn, relearn, and and you know you have to change the way we, we used to look at uh, things and solutions. 
and then definitely collaborations because resources we know are limited there is no point uh, you know duplicity will not take us anywhere so collaborate i think uh, i i just love the words that everyone has used and I, there's not a single word i would take out of that list you know and i the only <laughs> thing that i think is that uh, we have to to communicate more communicate better it's never okay not to not to communicate and even if that means that i communicate by donating 100 rupees that's fine if it's communicating and helping someone in my own way that's fine if it's communicating my own struggle that's fine as well but now given that we don't have the don't have the luxury of being with each other physically you know it's even more important to be able to share things with each other because that will help us do what ram said just now not the full collaboration piece will only come when we know where you where what that empathy will create i just love words we all put together it's really uplifting manisha I totally agree with everybody and all the words used, and I just want to add that you know we should just try to do our best in our sphere of influence whenever we get the chance, and I think that would be a good enough start. Uh, so it's it's really been for me this year has been something which has been enlightening, as as uh, somebody earlier said. Uh, first three months was a surprise we didn't kill each other. Same story at my end. I'm still surprised my two kids are alive. I haven't killed them. So for me that was a big achievement at the end of the first three months. Uh, so I think you know we try to do our best every single day should be the motto. Zamruda, just one thing. Uh, you know the tagline of this festival: only art can heal the world. I think if we can convert social kindness into a fine art, how to give, what to give. You don't have to like. You don't have to have money to tear a check. You can give your time, your talent. Uh, so many ways to give. So I think social kindness can become a fine art, and that would heal the world. Pratibha, I really don't know what else to say after that. You've done it. For me. You've summarized everything for me. Honestly, you've done made my job no. so much. <laughs> But it is true. I mean, art. If social kindness can become the art and be as popular as art is in different forms today, uh, we would definitely be a better world. I believe in that. Definitely. I mean, art is very close to me, as you can see right behind me. But other than that, also. But yes, I mean, uh, as everybody has said, the kind of words and emotions being used, the year has taught us a lot, and it definitely. I hope we keep that learning with us as we go ahead. And I'm not just talking of the seven of us here; I'm talking of everybody because it's very easy also to forget and move on. Unfortunately, that's also something we've learned. I have learned in my 47 years that it's not. easy to forget i mean it's not difficult to forget sorry and we do often uh but i hope whatever good we learned in this year we do keep this that with us and stay with the social kindness which i think it has brought up in many of us most of us for that matter uh i have seen as most of you have said and said the kindness has taken a different meaning i'm not saying it wasn't there earlier this year has done something and i think that may have been a good point maybe a turning point and hope it does stay like that i know i'm being very optimistic but i would like to be that <laughs> and stay with that um i think that's about it for me um pretty much at the end of it it's 659 Thank you, everybody, and thank you, Jay Rangam, for giving us this space. It's been so good to hear all of you and your thoughts. Ah, uh, once again, so glad you could make it at such a short notice. It's been a great evening and a great one hour. Thank you, Zamruta. Thank you, Zama. Thank, thank you, everybody. Great for the moment. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. 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 Thanks a lot and thanks everyone. Thanks. Lovely bye seeing bye. everybody. Bye. Absolutely. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.